Good morning. Good morning. Good to be here today. Good to worship and praise God. And we'll begin by joining in the call to worship. We are called to follow Jesus. No, it will demand our dedication and energy. <clears throat> come, all of you, come and learn of Lord Jesus Christ. Now we'll join in singing hymn 158. Come, Christians, join to sing. I invite you to welcome one another to this morning's worship service. You go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. There are several things going on. We do are starting our Strengthening Families program today. Uh, and it'll be right after worship service. We'll have a meal, and then we'll uh, stay here at about 2 o'clock, uh, beginning our first uh, introduction lesson, our first lesson. If uh, you still want to be in it and haven't, haven't uh, you know, said that, well, let us show up, and we will... We will make you part of the program. 
uh, then we will have at 5 o'clock uh, all the junior high through high school uh, youth are invited out to Polings Pond. We will have a get together there, families and all. So we'll hope you'll come. We'll have a lot of fun, a lot of food to eat. So those are going on. Uh, let's see. Monday night, we won't have our Monday night Bible study because it's the piano recital. And every year we conflict with that. No one comes to Bible study. So <laughs> I don't even come. What's that? Piano-a-rama. Whatever it's called. piano a rama <laughs> Anyway, if you haven't gone there before, make sure you go to that. It's really a, a good thing. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have uh, several meetings this week. Uh, Monday is the uh, uh, missions committee meeting at 5, Tuesday nominating committee, Wednesday PPR, and then next uh, Monday we have evangelism committee meeting. Uh, then two weeks from today, we're having a big, big thing. Uh, it's all... all t- church uh, get together. Uh, part of it is going to be revealing our secret family prayer partners and then drawing ones for next year, but also it's for everybody. We're going to have a, a, a bouncy house here for the youth. We'll we have game and activities. We'll provide the meat and the drinks, and you just have to bring a side dish, and we'll just, you know, just get together and fellowship, and uh, part of our, our health and wellness committee uh, projects, and so we'll help you'll be a uh, come and be a part of that. Uh, there are uh, flyers up here about an event next weekend in, in uh, Ray. It's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evening, 5.30 to 6.30 is a free meal. Then 6.30 to about 7.30 is uh, kind of just a, uh, an opportunity to, to hear, hear the Christian uh, message. Uh, so we hope you will uh, go take part in that. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, confirmation class will begin on Wednesday, and I think those are the main things, and she has an uh, announcement about uh, cherubs. Thank you, Warren. I also want to embellish on the Pianorama a little bit because it's sponsored by Music Club, and it's a group of six or eight people that get together with that many keyboards and play and it's wonderful. It's at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it starts at 6.30 on Monday evening. So if you can come, please do. Now, the main reason I'm up here is for the cherubs. They started practice Wednesday after school, and poor things were starving because I was asleep, and I didn't get stuff there for them. I need to have one person to take one month, October through May, and be responsible for either having someone here at 3.30 to pass out snacks to the children when they come after school, or to make sure somebody else is here to do that. And the thrift store has generously provided these snacks for several years, and they will do it again. I do have the phone number for the thrift store, which is what you can use to charge the snacks at the grocery store. Um, If you're willing to do that, please let me know. I have a sign-up sheet and I have it with me, and I'll be here after church. So you can sign up then, or you can call me, or you can run me down somewhere. But I need people to take from the 1st of October through May to provide snacks for the cherubs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, One other thing, we do have the uh, sign-up sheet for people for the children that want to light the candles on Sunday, and there are a few openings, so it's back on the bulletin board when you come in. So now invite the children to come forward.
Hi, bro. Good morning. Man, it's good to see all of you up here this morning. Man, alive. I don't, if you guys started to get mad at me, I don't think I could fight you off, could I? No, there's too many of you. Speaking, speaking of fighting or hurting someone, if I ask you, or I'm going to ask you, what part of your body can do the worst damage to someone? What part of your body can hurt somebody the worst? Your what? Words. Your words. Is that part of your body? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Your actions. Fist. What? Fist. 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 That's what I, I might think of. Or maybe your head. Places. What's that? Your hands. Oh, your hands. Your hands. Thinking. Thinking. Yeah, fist. Yeah. Pinch, pinching. Oh, okay, I got you. Pinching. Yeah, your leg. You can kick pretty hard. But guess what? You're all wrong. The Bible says that the part of your body that can hurt the worst is your tongue. Your tongue. Why do you think your tongue can... And actually, the ones who said first your words or what you say... That's actually right, because your tongue is the one that speaks, isn't it? And did you realize that when we say things, we can really, whoa, <laughs> we can hurt people. Can you make it? <laughs> Say, where are you? <laughs> See, hear her tongue? <laughs> yes. Hey, she, she must be reading the Bible because she said the tongue is like playing with fire. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says the tongue is like taking a match and putting it in a dry forest and just burning everything up because we can do that. But we don't have to say bad things. We can say good, we should say good things, things that help. What are some of the, did, like today, did I say, I don't like seeing you here? Did I say that? Would that, would that have hurt your feelings? It would. But I like seeing you here. And I said, welcome. And then you said hi also. And so that's, we need to remember that our tongue is an important part. We show that we're Christians when we say kind things, when we help people, and when we're nice. And so we need to think about that. Next time somebody kind of upsets you, instead of immediately saying a bad word or calling, you know, saying, I don't like you, then you should maybe pretend like you're chewing, eating. Because if you're eating, what does your parents tell you? Are you supposed to talk while you're eating? No. No, no heat your mouth closed, aren't you? So if you pretend next time you get ready to say something bad, well, just pretend for a minute like you're chewing on something. And then maybe when you get through, then you won't want to say anything bad. You'll want to say something helpful. Okay? Okay. Oh, okay. That's another good idea. She said, sometimes you have to put your hands up over your mouth so that you won't say it. And you have something too? No? Okay. Please join me in an echo prayer. Dear God, help me control my tongue. And not say hurtful things. Let me be helpful by praising people. Help me to say I love you, both in word and action. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In order to help you remember that you should chew or pretend like you're chewing, we're giving you some really hard chewable candies. And I'm thinking I might be short one or two, but so when we run out, I'll have to find something from last, <clears throat> from the last week or two. Do we 
have enough? Okay, guess we're going to make it. You're welcome. Now off to Sunday school. And thank you for all the adult Sunday school teachers. Wow, there's no one left. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all right. Yeah, it's time now to share God's word with you. Our first reading is from the book of Proverbs. It's actually the first chapter, verses 20 through 33. <clears throat> and it's really stressed here at the beginning of Proverbs how important it is uh, that there's wisdom out there. And, of course, God is wisdom. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Um, God speaks to us through prophets. And, but God speaks this to us through his word, too. And that's what the Proverbs are meant to do. And so ha, this really stressing here, how important the word's out there. We need to listen to it. We need to heed to it. And we need to do the things that help rather than to hurt. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, it raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded, and because you have ignored all my counsel and would not listen to my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. <clears throat> then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat of the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. And then we turn in our hymnals to page 750 and we'll join together in Psalm 19. Page 750. <clears throat> Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and runs its course with joy like a strong man. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and keeping them there is great reward. Also, keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then 
then from James chapter 3, 1 through 12, James has been, been telling us how, how important it is to, uh, to follow God, to follow Jesus Christ, do the things that, that he did. And it's one thing to say that you're a Christian, but then you need to put those, those sayings into action. And so that's where he ended off in chapter 2. And here in, here in chapter 3, he starts off in, in telling how important it is. Now, as we put those words into action, one of the ways is to be a teacher. But he says that not everybody should be a teacher because that's a, lots of responsibility. And also, in, all of us, when we try to say something, it doesn't always come out right. And so we need to realize that and realize that we need to, need to turn to God and depend upon him to help us with what we say. But then he moves into, like I was telling the kids, that the most, uh, uh, the part of your body that can cause the most harm is the tongue. And uh, just like Rachel said, it can start a big fire in a forest or cause a lot of trouble among friends and family. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistake in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check like an animal with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Even though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. <clears throat> How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The, it stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, in itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring put forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Now it's time for us to join our joys and concerns. And I wanted to mention this morning that these flowers up here this morning are are from Nettie Oshner's service, and they're beautiful, and we appreciate the family sharing those with us. So what are some joys that we bring this morning? Yes. A new grandbaby, yay. And what's the name? Hudson Elton. Hudson Elton, a little boy, good. Congratulations, Grandma and Grandpa again. Okay, and what other joys? Oh, I know we had to have some. Now, Carol and Harvey shared this morning that Carol is having a birthday, I think, on Thursday, and so that's a joy for, for them. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> We're, gl we're glad you're having a birthday and someone was here to share it with us. <laughs> you won't, she won't hurt you, I promise. <laughs> okay, other joys. It's good to see all the kids here this morning. It's a joy to start our, our uh, Strengthening Families program. And it was a joy. We had a, a, a big, big uh, get-together out at Beecher Island. I, I tried to go out there, but when I got there, there were so many cars and no place to park close, I just decided to keep going to Ray and eat. <laughs> but uh, also the, the uh, 36 treasure hunt had a lot of, a lot of people with garage sales and a lot, of, a lot of people in town for that, so lots of good things going on. And our, and our football team won again. How about the girls' volleyball team? They do good? 
come on. Where's our volleyball player? They won. Okay, good. Okay. Other joys? What's the last uh, from Friday to Friday and eight days there? I think we had four funerals, and then also there was a, a funeral y uh, yesterday uh, for. Uh, oh, uh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, when it, anyway, we want to keep keep uh, uh, all those families in our in our prayers. As far as uh, concerns, I really don't have a a lot. Uh, we did get news on. Uh, Boy, my mind's going blank right now. Uh, got news on Rosemary. Uh, she called and said that she uh, is at home, uh, that I think probably the problems with the kidneys might have been due either to, to, to her teeth problem, but more likely maybe just some medicine that they gave her. And so they've ch changed the medicine and put her on something else. And so she is at home, and she's doing much better. And I think they're kind of thinking that, that uh, probably she won't have to have uh, dialysis or a kidney transplant that I think this is just maybe is a temporary thing but keep her in your prayers because I know she'll appreciate that okay any other uh, concerns okay then we will have a moment of silent prayer we'll follow it up then with uh, pastoral prayer and then we'll join together and pray the Lord's Prayer so let's pray Gracious God, <clears throat> we come into your presence because there is a calming influence. We can feel your love and your touch. We know that there's hope. We know that there's someone who forgives us and listens to us. We just need that so much in our lives. Help us to remember to all, that you're always there and that we always need to turn to you. And as we miss, saw in the Proverbs, that your wisdom is all about us. You don't want us to make the wrong choices and to hurt as a result of those choices. But you want us to be able to do the right things that not only help ourselves but help others as well. So please guide and direct us and open up our eyes and our minds to your touch and to your guidance. We thank you so much for all the blessings that we do have as individuals and as a church. We pray that you help us to continue to, to keep reaching out and, and touching people and making a difference, to keep having worship services, to keep going out to the nursing homes and to people's homes, to keep having Bible studies. Yes, it takes money to do all that, but when we trust in you, we'll find that we always have pl plenty to give and that you're always there. And you'll never leave us short. We thank you for the other blessings, for birthdays, for anniversaries, for just the, 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 all the extra things that we have going on in our communities, for our school, for our teachers, our coaches, for our students, for our athletes. Continue to keep them centered, not just on their schoolwork and things, but also upon you, for they need to learn how important it is to center their lives around you. And like our, our young people whose families bring them to worship, it's a great, great thing, a great future that we have. We uh, thank you now for Jesus Christ and for the love that he brought into the world too. But we come with concerns. We lift up those families who have lost loved ones and help them as they grieve. Be with those who are struggling with health issues in their lives and who may be struggling with other issues, maybe with self-images, maybe with family relations, maybe with lack of money. But whatever it is, be there for them as well. But we especially ask that you be with those who are grieving, help them during their time of loss, and then help each one of us to open up our minds to be guided by you to lift up your cross so that we can do your, your will, not ours, but your will. And it's in Jesus' name 
We pray, but now we unite our voices as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I just realized that I skipped one part of our worship service. <laughs> the ushers will come forward. We'll worship and praise God by giving him our gift. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, we give to you because you've given us so much. It is important for us to give openly, not just of our material things, but also of, of ourselves. We need to give love. We need to offer forgiveness. And we hope that these gifts here will bring hope to those living in the darkness. Shine your light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 2149, Living for Jesus. It's in the faith we sing hymnals. It's not one that we probably have sung before, but it uh, really has some really meaningful words, and it is easy to sing. I didn't make the mistake and go, go ask Althea today <laughs> if it was easy or not. I looked at it and said, hey, I can follow those notes. <laughs> so, no, the reason I'm teasing her is because last week... Uh, <laughs> We, we actually, we, we didn't sing it, but we sang it at the early service, and well, okay, we played it at the early service. We couldn't sing it, could we? <laughs> no, no, I changed it to Amazing Grace, and she said, oh, it, it says, yeah, it's in the little hymnal, but it's kind of confusing, and the, I think the one in the big hymnal is easy to sing, but it wasn't. <laughs> so anyway, 2149, you'll like this one.
seated. This scripture from the Gospel of Mark comes from chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. Jesus had been going around, uh, of course, doing his ministry, talking to people, healing people, and he sees that uh, a lot of people in the crowd are uh, gaining faith. They've, a lot of them have been without. They've had problems. But he, and, and he sees that his disciples are growing too, but not always as much as he wants. So he decides to test them by asking them a question. Who do the people say that I am? And uh, they respond, and then he asks them, who do you say that I am? And, of course, Peter responds and says, you're the Messiah. And that should be a good thing that Peter knows that. But then Jesus describes what it means to be the Messiah, and that's when Peter thinks he knows more than God. So he says, hey, no, let that happen. You're to be like David, and you're to fight. And uh, that's when Jesus says, no, get behind me, Satan, because you're not to lead God, you're to follow God. So he says, take up your cross and follow me. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, who do the people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist. And others said, no, it's Elijah. And still others said, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering. He must be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and then three days later rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and said to him, he rebuked him and saying, and he rebuked him. But then turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on earthly and human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life for their own sake will lose it, and those who save their life for my sake, who lose their life for my sake, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and to forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, it was a busy weekend. Actually, I think it was supposed to be like Friday through today, but I think it began Wednesday or Thursday with all the people coming into town for the Highway 36 treasure hunt. People came in with vans and with pickups carrying big trailers, some of them going from all the east end to the west end, some from the west end to the east, some of them starting in the middle, maybe this year then heading west and then the next year heading east, I don't know what their plans are, but anyway, there were lots of people here to try to take advantage of the people in the towns that realized we have too much stuff. We don't need all this stuff. We need to downsize and get rid of some of it. Some of it, yeah, was valuable. When we got it, we thought we really needed it, but as it turned out, why did I buy a new piano, Warren? You can't keep notes. <laughs> I shouldn't have bought that. Or why did I get a new big buzz saw? I don't know how to make anything, but I thought at the time I thought I needed it. And why did I get that bread maker? I want to make homemade bread, but then I never used it. And so we had some really good expensive things, and people were looking for bargains, so they came into town to seeing what they, they could get. Some of them wanted these things because, hey, I can get some of the things that I don't have that I need. I can get them cheap. Others said, hey, I can get things cheap that are really good, and then I can make money off of it. But it doesn't matter what their reason are. They were looking for a bargain. They were trying to get a really, really good deal. And 
And it was about them, about doing something for themselves. People here, though, in other places, hey, we don't need all that stuff anymore, so we're going to downsize. We're going to empty our lives of some of these things that are cluttering it all up. Well, Jesus knows that there's all kinds of things in our lives that are cluttering things up. And as he was going through on his ministry through, through the big area, he realized that as the crowds came, the people who were in need, the people who were on the outskirts of society, that they were beginning to understand that he had things to offer. People were just reaching out to touch him so they could be healed. But his disciples were seeing this, and yet he didn't see the faith developing that he hoped would develop. They still seemed to be empty. They seemed to be wandering around. They still seemed to be centering things upon themselves. And so during this trip, he stopped and he asked a question. Who do the people say that I am? And of course, the answers of his disciples are the truth, because the, most of the people don't see Jesus as the Messiah. They see him as Elijah, or as John the Baptist, who was just killed recently, but they think he's come back to life. Elijah has come back to life, or one of the other prophets. And then Jesus asks them after they give that answer, well, who do you say that I am? And he knows that probably Peter's going to be the one that speaks, and Peter does. He says, you are the Messiah. But then Jesus disappoints them by saying, don't tell anyone who I am. And then he begins to tell them that as the Messiah, he's going to be rejected, he's going to suffer, he's going to die, and then he's going to have to rise again. And that's when Peter shows that he has centered his life around himself, around the earthly things, because he thinks life is more important than anything else. So he says, no, that cannot happen. You are the Messiah. You're in the line of King David. You are supposed to lead us to victory, not to be defeated yourself. And when he says that, that's when Jesus steps up and says, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. How cruel that sounds. Peter, you're the devil. Peter, you're being led by the devil. The reason Jesus says that is because he knows that those of us that put more emphasis on the earthly things than we do on the spiritual things, that we are following Satan. We are on the pathway downward. And that's what happens so many times when the material things become more important to us than the spiritual things. When we gather and gather, we have to have this kind of car, we have to have that kind of piano, or whatever it might be, and then we find out that what, what good did it do us? That's what I find out when I talk to the people in the nursing homes. Most of them agree. I had a hard time wanting to come into the nursing home because I had to give up things. But now that I no longer have them, I find out, yeah, they had special memories and things, but they weren't the true meaning of life. They were just things. The real meaning of life comes when you know who God is, you know who Jesus Christ is, and you're led by the Holy Spirit. And so that's what Jesus is trying to emphasize when he says, who do you say that I am? And if you're dwelling on the past, you're missing Jesus. That's what was happening to the chief priests and the scribe and the Pharisees. They were just dwelling, saying, oh, I know the scriptures. I can tell you all about that, and that's all I need to know. But see, God, Jesus says, no. It's not what you know, but it's what you do with what you know. Are you putting what you know about God into action and following the actions that God would do? That's what James says in chapter 3. And then in chapter 4, he says, putting your word into actions, you have to watch out your tongue. You have to say good things, not bad things. But Jesus says, we need to take up our cross. It's not about ourselves, Peter, because you're going down into the bargain basement. You're trying to get 
what you think is easy to get. That's what Satan tries to convince you. But it costs to follow Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about gathering up all the possessions, but it's about doing what you can to help, doing what you can to go out of your way to make someone feel welcome. It's about giving what you have so someone else can have things a little bit better. And I don't mean by giving, necessarily giving money, but could we have Sunday school if we didn't have those people who give their time to be teachers? Could we sing wonderful songs if we didn't have someone who'd be willing to play the piano and the organ? Could we have worship and put it on TV if we didn't have someone who ran the sound booth? See, those people are giving of themselves. But guess what? They can give of themselves, but if we didn't give so that we had a building to worship in, would we be able to do much good? If she could play, but we didn't spend our money to buy organs and clavinovas, would we be able to have music? If we didn't spend our money on Sunday school material so the Sunday school teachers could have something to teach, would we be able to get through to the kids? Probably not as easily. And I could go on and on about that. See, we have to give of our talents, but we also have to give of the money that we have so that we can be a church going forth and doing the works of God. The church does amazing things. We reach out into the community in a variety of ways, but it does take money to do that. And so, <laughs> like, like, like I was told, you forgot the most important part of this morning's worship, Warren. You <laughs> forgot offering. <laughs> but sometimes it's hard to give to God because, we, well, I'm going through tough times myself. Why should I give 10% of what I have when I can use it for something better? But when we learn to trust in God, we learn that giving really it, it br brings a new light, a, a new era of things. When God called me to go to seminary, it was at the worst time in my life. I just got a gotten a divorce. I I had to. It was like, oh, can I? If I'm going to seminary, I probably don't need to teach anymore. So I turned in my teaching resignation. But I wasn't ready to go to seminary yet. I hadn't done all the preliminary work. So for one whole year, here I am. I have to pay extra child support. I'm barely getting by by helping farmers a little bit. <laughs> they don't pay the help a whole lot, <laughs> especially when you're not good help. <laughs> and I did substitute teaching. And I kept telling God, there's no way that I'll be able to make it. But goodness, those five years, I had more than I needed. I didn't make much money, but there was always something there. When you trust and give to God, he's going to make sure that you have life. And so it's important that we realize when we're sharp, shopping for the bargains in life, are we putting our faith in that one bargain that means the most in God so we're going up to heaven, or are we down in the bargain basement trying to get those cheap things, trying to take the easy way out. So we find out that that doesn't bring peace and meaning to life. Meaning in life comes when we are taking up our cross, not doing our thing, but we're doing God's thing, both as individuals and as the church. And it takes all of us to make those things happen. Take the commitment to serving God getting behind Jesus and doing what he tells us to do. That's where we find true meaning in life, true peace. That's when we know that we are God's children and he loves us even when, we're, when we fall short, when we make mistakes, when we don't <laughs> we almost forget the offering. God still loves us and sees the possibilities. So rather than trying to, trying to find the bargain basement, why don't you take a step upstairs and follow Christ and be at peace. Amen. Our closing hymn reminds us uh, how important it is to
follow Jesus. And it's 2173, because when we follow Jesus, we're going to shine like Jesus. 2173, faith we sing. And now, as you go for it, know that uh, the best thing you can have in life is a strong spirit. 
center your lives around Jesus Christ and then follow in his footsteps and be at peace. Amen.